Yo, 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 welcome back to the Further Your Lifestyle podcast, conversations on lifestyle, passions, and hustles. My name's Chris Ferling, and I am your host, and I am so thrilled and so excited to introduce to you our guest today, May Punara. Now, what I love about May so much is that she has such such a hustle and such a drive, and she's a very hardworking individual. What we do talk about is, yes, who she is, her journey, and how she has created a lifestyle for herself around building a business as a digital marketer and website developer. Now, outside of all that, she's a runner and she's doing a lot of amazing things. But coming back to what I really do really like about her so much is how she approaches everything with kindness. And that's what this episode is all about, doing life, doing business, and creating a journey and creating a lifestyle, but with kindness. And she tries to bring that into her business. She tries to bring that in all that she's doing. And and it's very evident in her personality and just the way she goes about doing things. Now, it's been really great being able to follow her journey so far. Uh, Her business called The Kind Design, coming back to that kindness piece. And, you know, we have a really good chat in this one and we, we, we we do go through a lot. We talk about her journey and her business and day in the life and processes and all that jazz. So if this is something that sounds like that you're interested in, then grab a cup of coffee, grab a cup of tea, whatever floats your boat, however you like to listen to a podcast, and let's get into it. Of course, we are on Spotify, we are on YouTube, we're also on Apple Podcasts, so whichever one you want to listen to, or maybe you want to go jump over there later, please do that, would really appreciate it, especially if you jump over to the YouTube and give us a thumbs up, give us a comment, and let us know what you thought about this episode. All right, let's get straight into it. Welcome, May. Welcome to the Further Your Lifestyle podcast. It's so good to finally have you here. Um, I'm excited to have you here. It's been a long time coming. And um, yeah, h- how are you going today? Yeah, pretty good. Pretty good. Um, very good day outside. Um, yeah, and I'm very excited to be here. And thank you so much for having me. You are so welcome. It's, uh, I mean, I've been following your journey for a very, very long time. And, you know, we've, we've actually been in the same circles of people for a very long time as well here in Melbourne. And with the running and just, you know, kind of with the same mindsets and understandings. But let, let, let's hear a bit about yourself and, you know, maybe just a nutshell of your background, who you are, what you're all about, uh, just for, so the listeners can can hear it from you. Yeah, of course. Um, my name is May and I originally from Thailand and been living in Melbourne for I think this year nine years now and it's been very good I love Melbourne um, you know and I came here just by myself and you know when you uh, want to make a change in life at some point so I actually decided all right I'm gonna move to Australia and I did suddenly so I came here with my friends, a couple of friends as well. And then I study a Bachelor of Business and I graduated in 2009, not 19, 16, of course, 16 and worked full time a couple of years and now doing another Bachelor degree in teaching as well. So it's been a very, very long journey in, in Melbourne, which is I really, really enjoying it. Um, yeah, so pretty much, you know, just just general. And then I've been working in different role as well in different industry in Melbourne, um, from education industry to architectural hardware. And my background is very various. And my role is very, I came across with, you know, human resource marketing, a lot in marketing and digital marketing space as well with um and also have experience in like project management stuff um it's been very interesting journey journey so yeah yeah no th- thank you for that and i mean the first thing i want to ask is so why melbourne was it was it for the coffee for the wine or <laughs> just because you know it was ranked you know the best place to live in the world a, a few times in a row so yeah why melbourne To be honest, I didn't even know when I decided to say yes, because it was at the point. So at that time, let me um, look back to my story when I was actually working full time as PR marketing in um, uh, just a a company based in Bangkok. And it was the point that, you know, what, I just want to make a change. And my friend was like, do you want to go to Australia? And I was like, why not? And then I suddenly make a progress and buy the ticket and 
decided where I actually didn't know how Melbourne looked like and yeah <laughs> did not know anything didn't have any much friend like yeah so I, it was really um I was I wouldn't say risk it was a risk but it it was the the um what what, what can I say? It's like a surprise journey that I yeah. actually didn't plan anything and it went really well, actually. Yeah, well, I mean, th- I mean that's great. And, and kudos for doing it. I loved how you said, why not, right? You, when your friend asks you and it's kind of like, that, that kind of sums <laughs> it up, right? I mean, when, we give these op- when we're given these opportunities and you don't really have anything to say no against or that it doesn't, you know, there's nothing stopping you. It's kind of like, well, uh, yeah, I guess why not, right? And, you know, to be able to, you know, step away from, you know, everything that you've known and then to, you know, have that big change. It, it's it's no easy feat, right? So kudos for doing that. And then to come over here, other than with your friends, but, you know, by yourself with, you know, no family and things that that's scary. And, you know, I, I think that has probably been a big part of what's enabled you to, to get to where you are today, because you've had to, you know, be self-reliant and self-independent. And um, I think that that shows in, in all the work that you do. So, yeah, kudos for, for doing that. I, I, I think that's really good. I appreciate good. it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. It's been a really fun part as well. Like um, I've been, I would say for the first two years when I got here, I actually still lost because, you know, I didn't have family here and, and I was actually like trying to find my way to doing life. But after three or four years, I got used to all the things. I started making friends online start making friends outside going out more and now everyone just become my family really in Melbourne and I actually really loving it so you're welcome <laughs> now I mean and that's good I mean Melbourne Melbourne does you are wonderful <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I've, I've been you in Melbourne my entire yeah. life so you know it, it, I mean not in Melbourne the heart of Melbourne but always around Melbourne and it does it brings a great, you know, good range and broad of lifestyles and opportunities to everyone. You know, we we do really have a lot of, to be honest, there's a lot of, I guess, non-local Australians that are that are here now, and it's it's really diverse and dynamic. So yeah, it, it's good to to have you part of that. So you, you've you've done a lot over the years, as you mentioned, you've got a, a big background in a lot of different areas, especially around the business and marketing. And I think that's you know that can be. You know, a bit of a saturated words like you know I studied business so it's like okay you know <laughs> so everyone I feel like a lot of these days a lot of people's like oh yeah I've done business or I've done a bit of that or and but I guess you know if we if we jump ahead you know you you, you touched on that you did some marketing jobs you did some PR jobs um, but you know at the end of the day the one thing that has stood out and why I wanted you to be onto the podcast is because you work for yourself and you know you have gone for a journey to get there and maybe we can touch on very quickly on like why work for yourself versus you know taking the the normal last couple of years when I work in the corporate still I was I was enjoying it I, I love um to connect with you know my colleague but there was the point you know one day you just woke up and you feel really lost and I had that feeling I would say in a while in last couple of year um, and then I actually just start asking myself really hard where I'm like what I actually want is this my career do I actually enjoying it um, and there was the point that I faced with depression and anxiety as well with my personal stuff And there was the really hard hit for me where I just need to decide what I actually want to do because I could not keep doing that um, anymore. And so I decided to just, you know, I'm going to quit this job and see how it takes. So I decided to move back to Thailand a couple of months and try to get a job again. And because of I've been here, I had been here for probably that time for six years and I I when I got back to Thailand I was actually a little bit like confused as well and I actually you know decided to move back here again and that's how I start to actually realize that all right I actually don't want to work um, in the you know the same environment anymore and I actually have this passion to connect with people and I love 
doing some event stuff to networking and start doing some, you know, personal development a lot. And that's how it's become clear for what I want to do. So I actually start juggling with online business stuff since 2019 I failed twice, to be honest, you know, and <laughs> I launched the um, an e-commerce platform um, as well. And it did not go well because um, without ex much experience, I would say, and that happened. It, went, it was fine. And last year, how it hit again. And I was spent like probably six, seven months just did some research, what I want to do, connect with people a lot online. And um, it's really helped me to actually realize that this is actually I really want to do for myself and with my experience and um, that I have marketing stuff and I, I always want to take that part with me and um, you know helping others people as well where I kind of like oh I have experience in digital marketing and what I actually can help people help with business so that's why I pick um, web design because I actually enjoying it so probably I need to tell a little bit of a story about how, how the Kai design come up. Actually, I think it's come to the point where I tell you my story. One thing I wanted <laughs> to just kind of highlight there and just play it back to you is it sounds like, you know, um, you've got a very good self-awareness aspect to yourself and whether you know it or not is what I think is very interesting and, and, and key for the listeners is that, you know, you've made some you know real big drastic changes in your life you know you've you've gone from a different country to another country and you know you've worked and then you've quit job and tried to work for yourself and you know you shuffled around and in all that you keep saying that something didn't feel right that you want to change and you know if anything you were restless and for someone you know I think there's there really is those two types of people in the world the people that they keep moving and jumping until they find where they fit Versus some people, they, they don't because they're too scared of the change. They're too scared of the risks or, oh, but what if it doesn't pan out or what am I going to do? And for someone, you know, that you've done it a fair bit and you've moved around and not just in location, but with jobs and now for yourself and you've, you've admitted that you've failed a few times with different, you know, things that you've started, you know, that, that's no easy feat. So once again, kudos to that because, you know, everything that you've done, you know, sorry, everything that you've done in the past up to this point is enabled you to get to where you are. And that's, that's super important for your journey. And, you know, in, in what you're all about, because it's not just from a personal development, but also from your professional development as well. So I think that's really good. And that's a great strength or, um, you know, key characteristic that you have to be able to do that so that that's really cool yeah thank yeah thank you and i think like um before covid i was still juggling and try to shifting my mindset but after covid i would say you know i kind of like take advantage of any opportunity that come to me every day and kind of like all right, I have a chance to do this today what can i get out of that so i think for most of us miss that thing where kind of like you know, you just need to appreciate every single thing that's coming, especially opportunity, who are you around with, what the environment around, what is your vibe and how that makes you feel. And that's gathering everything all together and see opportunity, how you can raise, you, you can grow up from that, if that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And and you even touched on yeah. about, you know, you, you kept asking yourself, well, you maybe you didn't say it explicitly, but it all seemed to come us back to why are you doing this or what were you doing it for? And it sounds like that's been a really big key, you know, element or, or line within your life because, you know, it usually takes us to have a, you know, a life-changing moment for us to realize why am I doing this? You know, especially, you know, we can use COVID as an example because that's just recent, but, you know, usually people make that big drastic change where, you know, there's a death in the family or, you know, a near near death experience or, you know, all of a sudden their job, you know, you've been let go and that forces the change or to them to question. But it sounds like, and um, you, you may have had different things that have driven them, but it sounds like that you've always had that, you know, what is my why in the back of your mind, which is enabling you to take the next opportunity or look at the opportunities and where can you take action? So yeah, that, that's that's a really cool element to have. So yeah. So then, so well, yeah. well, with that, then I guess you know, as, as you kind of alluded to, then you know, your your currently your current business is the kind design. So you know, step forward, and I know we, we've touched on this a bit, but so 
I guess, you know, the kind design, what is it? What is it all about? And what are you all about with that? And then I know that your tagline, tagline is about your approach. You know, you want to do everything with creating and with kindness. So, you know, where does that maybe come from and, and, and touch on that? From the story that I was mentioned that our marketing experience and project management and business stuff that I have. So I am bringing everything into this space where I can, I just pick the, um, uh, the car design as a, a service, um, web design service. So I'm a web designer and also I actually help business with digital marketing as well. Social media and public relation is depend what kind of the business that, um, what type of service that they need, but more likely focusing on website design, website development. So my aim is to bring kindness into the business world, to the business space, to you know, I actually believe that kindness is the key of building trust for everyone, for friendship, for everyone really. And from my experience working in corporate, it was great. But when people working in the job and they actually forgot to be kind to each other, forgot to be kind to, to, to ourselves really. And I would like to bring this word as awareness um, to spread out more kindness into my space. And yes, yeah, so pretty much I'm just aiming to help a small business or freelancers or size hustler if they want to start the um, uh, business or something that different. I actually really look into um, the, you know, the new marketing campaign as well. Where can I, where, how can I like help the a new graduate to look into like the building that soft skill as well so if that makes sense and um, I think that kind of is will always push us further where kind of like you know when you're being kind to someone you have the um the 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 positive um vibe to kind of like just put you next to the next level like for example when I help um the clients and when they say oh I need help something that and i I use the kindness as like, oh, I, I can help with that. Just use the help as a kindness offering. Um, and I think, I think it, it's been good, but, you know, I just start for, it. it's just the fourth month really. And I actually really, really enjoying it. It's a lot of to learn still, but I, I would say I come far away. Actually, last night I had, um, group mentor um, we have like accountability group every three months in my um, community it's like women support women it's called she mentors and it's incredibly incredible women support each other we have like oh what what did you reach your goal after two months and I said out loud and I was like oh I did that I did that I studying that and I actually did not realize that how far that I've come and it's been good really good to be honest but I would say there's so much thing that I need to learn and to fail and to experience it I guess so I hope that all makes sense. <laughs> there's, there's a lot there and you know th thank you for sharing that and it's you know look you you come across as a very kind person so I think that's very the very evident but I think you know the the big question probably that I would you know ask you is so you know yes there I think there's a really big difference that you can bring to your clientele you know bring that that kind approach or that that kindness element because you're right in in the in the current work environment we can sometimes you know myself included we can get so fixated on you know, the outcome we're trying to achieve that the people that are along the way, they're not necessarily the people we care about because we're so focused on, you know, the result or the outcome or where we're trying to get. And, you know, it's yeah. such a busy world. And, you know, I think that that probably came even more evident last year when we, we were still challenged with all the different priorities in our lives because we were all thrown upside mm -hmm. down. But, you know, so with that, you know, being kind to, you know, your, your stakeholders, to your clients and, and whatnot, that's, that's great. So how do you ensure that you're being kind to yourself to ensure that you can bring that kindness to others? Because that, that's probably going to be the key part to enable you to then, you know, give it out, right? You know, before we can love someone else, we need to love ourselves. Is, is there anything there that you try and 
focus on. And as you said, you know, you, you did all those, you went through your mentorship and you were able to share some of the goals and you hadn't realized maybe all the things you had achieved, um, which, you know, does play back to that, you know, being kind to yourself and reflecting and giving yourself that pat on the back. Yeah. That's really a good question because that one, another reason that you actually just brought up right now to being kind to ourselves is the most important thing before um, help others. So since I would say since I started doing my um, business, I actually put myself first and more. And I always ask myself, how do I feel today? What do I want to do? Do I stay balanced every day? What is the what is the area that I need to improve this week? For example, am I um, exercise enough this week? Do I have enough sleep? And you know, if I'm staying in balance and calf like because I'm working in the creative space as well, without that balancing, I actually easily burned out. And I, you know, it happened to me many times, to be honest. But um, when I look open my website, look into my social media, oh, this is my brand and look, reflecting that brand to myself as well, where kind of like, am I being kind to myself first before I offering a kindness to others? So yeah, I actually been doing that um, good, I would say. <laughs> and I, I kind of like, I sometimes remind my friends around as well and always checking out my friends around if are they being kind to 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 yourself as well and i i also want to adding up this um topic because one of the reason i picked the kind design as a kindness um it's because of my grandmother so she's when she alive when she alive when you know she's passed away like five years now and um she always she was always being kind to like her neighbors, always give her food, always very, very generous. And I told myself before I actually, you know, decided to do a business, like what the brand should be, how do I feel? And again, kindness that remind, will remind me to my grandmother as well. So there's a lot of reason why I'm behind a brand and the meaning of the brands and I actually loving it because you know the more people ask me like why is the kind design why is kindness or a couple of weeks ago um, I got a DM on Instagram asked me like I'm just really curious what is what kind of the design what type of the design it's very unclear and I was like thank you so much for asking me that and it's give me opportunity to explain the meaning of the brand what um, what's behind the brand name and I actually um, really liking it like right now so that's the uh, reason why the kind is I is I think that's that's really really good and I you know I I can put my hand up and say even before we were, you know, con connected and actually started talking, you know, on one-on-one, -on -one, that that's what stood out to me with the brand that you had created, even before you had created the kind design, is the way you go about sharing your day in the life. Um, you know, you are always tackling on the highs and the lows. Probably actually you're showing more of the reality, not necessarily that it's a low reality, but it's the reality of anything that we're going through. And it's, you know, you juggling this, you know, your exercise, your meditation, your mental space, but then juggling also you're trying to achieve this or you're growing a business or building a business. And I think if anyone hasn't checked out your Instagram on, on the kind design to go check it out, because you do, you share, you share that journey. And I think that in itself is what speaks louder because at the end of the day, your brand isn't about, um, you know, the website design. I mean, yes, that's what you're selling. That's the service you're bringing, but you are the brand. You are the face of the brand and everything that you do will kind of trickle into that. So, you know, being able to show who you are to your client or potential customers is going to go that little step further because people aren't just buying the service or product you're delivering they're buying you or a piece of you or a part of you or a time exactly. of you so i think i think yeah. i think you've hit the nail on the head with that because it, it is very evident evident to myself now obviously for anyone listening i i haven't done any work with you so i can't speak from that side but from the content that you bring and, and what you share i think it's very evident and 
um, you know, it's relatable and it resonated with me. And I think that's so awesome that, you know, someone has asked you about, you know, why the kind design or where's the kindness or because it brings that curiosity element, right? And then when someone, it's kind of almost like you've, you've sucked them in and then you can give them that, you know, that hook um, and say, well, yeah. this is what I can do for yeah. you and why it's going to be different. So I think what you've created there, and I know you've spent a lot of time on building that and you still are, that, that's, that's really, really good. And it, it's starting to speak for itself. So yeah, good job. Thank you. I appreciate that, Chris. Thank you so much. You're so welcome. <laughs> well, I, I think, you know, you, you've answered some really good things there, in, which kind of segues into, you know, yes, you're a website designer, digital marketer, and helping people basically build out that. And, and you mentioned, you know, whether it's helping grads or actual people in their one pages or, you know, actually building out their websites. But let, let, let's touch on a bit more of, you know, the business itself, right? So, you know, we, we kind of mentioned around that you are sharing the highs and the lows and, and, and that but yeah I mean what does a day in the life even look like for let's say a website yeah. designer or someone building their business that is for website design yeah so I mean for me I as I mentioned before I uh, I've been doing a second degree in teaching as well so my day in life is quite a lot of things to juggling around where sometimes I work at school as well um, I'm a um, teaching assistant where I just jump in the class and we help with the kids. Uh, but more likely, you know, get up, do some of my morning routine, which is meditation first, a cup of tea and stretch my body and journaling as well. So that's every, you know, that's the thing that I need to do every single morning. I could miss at some weekend when I, you know, just, want to party that's just the normal yeah, that, that's <laughs> anyway <human>. so <laughs> and um i have the system where i actually put everything in my phone and do some time blocking where for example like tomorrow 9 to 10 i need to do some article writing or i need to contact with um, uh, you know, uh, subcontract or things like that. So I pretty much time blocking my task. And also I fit my running training for marathon in as well later um, or do, during the day sometimes it depends what week look like. So I plan out my week probably two weeks ahead and see what I can, you know, put stuff in. Sometimes I do some mentoring as well and I going out networking a lot, um, probably two or three times a week sometimes. And, um, but at the end of the day, I always make sure that I feel good. If I have the feeling like, oh, this is just too tight. For example, last couple of days, I was really tired and I kind of like, this weekend I'm gonna spend my time, me time and, you know, meditate more and, kind of like re-energize um, myself with all the positive, read the book. So I kind of like, you know, making a plan and fit that into my daily life, daily schedule for the next week, two weeks or so. Um, you know, like as well, if something come up um, during the day and, and I'm very, very flexible person and I just love doing um, what I do right now, like love catching with friends if I want to as well. Um, but one thing that I actually, I'm not sure if that my strength, my strength or my weakness, I really love being on time and I really frustrated or like hate a person that always late without giving me a notice. It just, my thing is like, I always on time or like I need to be, you know, if for example, like I need to be, in front of my desk at this time and if I even lay to myself and kind of like get angry <laughs> even with myself so and that's that's just come up when I start my business really because um, I've been behind on my tasks and that's reason why because sometimes I just like postponing my calendar and things like that. There's lots there right and you know I know you um, you, you're all about processes and systems and you have your ways of working and you know what you've touched on there I think it's good because 
a lot of the people that I do speak to, they all have their ways of doing things, whether it's a special routine or some of them, you know, they don't need to have things jotted down in a certain way. They just know where they are and what they need to do. And everyone works differently. And it's funny that you say around, you know, being on time or even for yourself, you know, and that, that comes back to self-discipline. It also comes down to your motivation and it can be a way to enable us to, to grow and, and make sure things are happening. Right. And I guess, you know, you've yeah. touched on a lot about the stuff that you're doing from a back end. And, you know, you mentioned that you're about four, four, five months into the business at this point in time. So you're really in the early days of, you know, you've just kind of just planted the seed and now you're doing a bit of the watering and you're prepping the, the groundwork for, you know, what's, what's to come in the long time in, in, to ensure that it's going to flourish and blossom and, and bloom. But with that in mind, so you're doing a lot of that back end and building out the brand and building and creating those processes and structures. So when you mentioned that, you know, if other things come up, you can, you, you can adjust, you can flex. And there's, there's kind of two things that I want to touch on here. There's, I guess, taking a step back, you know, going into the, the leap of working for yourself, coming out of, you know, the world where things are given to you and you are following someone else's processes and guidelines or, you know, routines or whatever, and then you're having to do it yourself. How, how did you go into that? Where, was it a big change or ha, were you able to just, you know, continue on or make it even better because finally you were in control? That's a very good question. Thank you for that. And I think it was really hard at the start because I, it's pretty much changed your lifestyle, really. You, you, it's changed the way you think to your life, your habit as well. Um, it took me a while to get back, um, get, get to where I am now, where I kind of like, oh, I need to control myself really hard sometime. Where, for example, like yesterday, I'm being honest here, um, if, you know, yesterday I got home, I have this schedule, I have to do that, that, that. But at the end of the day, I got really, really tired. And I said to myself, like, look, you know what? This is my company. This is my business. And this is my life. I probably stop doing this. And then it's okay to postpone my task. And it, should, it will be fine. And it's just that kind of thing, whereas if I follow to someone, you know, instruction, they probably, but no, you you cannot stop. You just need to do that. So it's just kind of like, it's very, what's the word say, like um, flexible or there's, there's the word in there. Um, well, there, there's yeah, so balance. Anyway, there's a lifestyle balance, a work-life balance. A balance, a lifestyle. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the word. And I kind of like, I'm really um used to it now where I at the moment at the moment I have another contract that I need to go in work in a company and I have like to be honest it's, it's very hard to get back to the that the side of the lifestyle where I gotta get it get up get on a train go to work and go home it's kind of like I wasn't sure if I'm still not sure if I'm still fit in that um the tie of the work where I kind of like nowadays get up um turn on my laptop, sit on a bed, start typing, start writing email in my bed, in my bed. Um, you know, but I would say uh, nothing is right or wrong. It depends how you like it. But for me, I prefer this lifestyle where they provide me a freedom, which is I always want a freedom every day. It's like, this is my thing. I want to do this. If I can fit anything in around me, which is fine. If, you know, I can just, I want to rest if I want to, I want to do that and to do that. It's, it's just me that I actually really enjoying it. So yeah, it's, it's just a freedom lifestyle that I have that's come with this business and I, I um, just love it. So. Yeah, no, that, that, that's, that's really good because, you know, a lot of the time when, you know, people, I mean, that's the reason why a lot of people do take that jump is for that lifestyle change. And I also yeah. know that sometimes there's the reality versus expectation, which doesn't also, you know, it doesn't always work out the way you thought it would be. And, you know, for you going yeah. into that transition and then building a business that can be, it, it's quite scary. And I, I can, you know, I can speak on the same sense of that, but yeah. the next part of that, that I wanted to kind of ask is because, you know, at the moment you, you do, you're in control, you can set the boundaries, you can set the limits and, you know, you, you set the day, but then now that you're starting to onboard clients, you're getting back to that world where, 
the client is starting to then, you know, dictate when they need things and stuff. So then how do you then juggle that into the world where you once had control of? Um, and ha- what has that element been like? Because that that's when it gets interesting again, because it's then, you know, yeah, setting that expectation or managing their expectations. To be honest, I am still practice my resilience about getting client on board, which is, uh, I would say 70 or 80% of them are still very early in business and they're always uh, busy where sometime I need to get meeting at 8 p.m. at night because of their kids, because of after works. And that happened a lot where I have to, submit my project and it took two weeks to approve because they not available so things like that happened and I um, still practice my kindness I would say. <laughs> and, and kind it's, it's actually good for me to um what's the word say again um to testing me my what's it called what's it called like calm not calmness uh oh, what's the word what was, what was wrong with me today well so, so um, you're, it's patient yeah, yeah, patient yeah. that's the word <laughs> yeah so that's that's the thing so I kind of like you know everything is good and bad so running your own business is great but it's not always the best you know you just need to deal with whatever it come and that is a soft skill that's coming every day probably oh I didn't even know that I have this skill until I deal with these clients so and again like every clients come in and they teach me and they're reflecting everything to me as well where I kind of like is this client will really fit into my time and am I be able to serve them what I want or maybe not and I kind of like, I just need to let that client go because that not suit me. And when things that happen and first, thing, or I'm, I'm still feel like bad about it. I mean, you know, I, I always want to help everyone, obviously. And now I kind of like, I got told from my mentor, I was like, you just need to practice your, your ability to accept and to, to learn what you learn from them when they come to you and you can't take that project and what you're going to deal with the late notice with the um uncertainty thing and you know I'm just learning every day really and with uncertainty again I think COVID teach us a lot last year of course and everything is uncertain really um nothing is permanent in this world I guess and that's just the way it is. Yeah, and, and I think <laughs> so, I, I think you've summed it up really, really well because you know, and you said that you know it, it's not it it's not easy, right? And I think a lot of people they go into this world of creating something that they control and which you get to, but it's not easy. It's it's not all sunshine and rainbows, and you know we can both appreciate that. And you know I think that's really cool or really key part that you mentioned around that, you know, you get to choose your client or you get to say no, or you can then set that boundary. And I know that's easier said than done. And you, and you mentioned that you're still getting, you know, into that rhythm and, and learning how to say no or adjust to that because yes, being kind and wanting to help everyone, you know, that could become as a bit of a, a challenge or a, a bit of a, an oxymoron to what you're even trying to achieve. But I think that's that's something which comes with the growth of the business because you will you'll get into a situation where you realize this is the one I probably shouldn't have done but you can you know you you then realize and then next time you know that okay Mm -hmm. if it's a situation like this or they're demanding or it's not in align to what you're trying to achieve from a business perspective and the branding perspective and your lifestyle then you can say no because it's no harm done right um yeah. and that's that's really great to be able to and that's why I really wanted to touch on it because a lot of the time people don't hear this they don't see that you know all they're seeing is you know an Instagram highlight or someone's journey or they're seeing you know I made four thousand dollars this month or whatever it is but you know there's a there's a huge journey to get to that point and what's really cool is yeah. you're at that starting point so to be able to then follow along and, and see you continue to thrive and pivot and build and you know adjust along the way which I'm yeah. sure you will that's that's really good but it sounds like you 
but at least you have the mentality mindset around the steps you need yeah. to take or the things you need to be mindful of. And then it's more about putting them into practice, applying them and, you know, learning to yeah. learning to fail fast, right? And I think that yeah. you, you mentioned that a yeah. bit as well. So yeah, it's it's no, oh, I mean it, it, there's a lot there. So thank thank yeah. you for sharing it, that. It, yeah, no, no worries. It's a lot. And I would say like if you you know you are listening right now, you want to build your own business, or it's of course if you you are the CEO, you are owning business, but behind the scene, like I no one chose how bad it is waking up in the middle of the night and you could not sleep and you've got insomnia, you've got depression, anxiety, on the, that behind the scene where um, I show on my social sometimes and, you know, sometimes people don't know that much, um, you know, people expect the result, of course, but I would say if you have decided to start your own journey, that you first thing that you might need to think at it, um, that if you also need to enjoy every single process since you start as well so you just need to practice your resilience your your mindset really and you just need to learn how to believe in yourself that's the first thing um you know you probably you just start a business and you don't have credibility of on your skills so you didn't have that credit yet but what you can you can do it just carry yourself on and with the confidence that you have you just need to play the game like pretending that you already in CEO that's role and what you are going to act if you be the actual CEO so you know you already have what you have right now and what you need to do is just practice the um um you know believe in yourself and everything I would say that's it you just got to do it right and it's probably maybe not the you know the answer people are looking for people probably want to you know here's like oh what's the quick way to get through this but it is it, it the only way through is through and to to experience it all and you know th thank you for sharing that because that is that is the honest truth and reality of it um yes. and yes. in the longer run yes you know 10 years 15 years down the track when someone said how did you get there? It is that cliche answer of it's a lot of hard work. <laughs> yeah, it's like, you know, like when you listen to podcasts, I'm like, oh, I've done $10 million, things like that. But oh, how was the life of the first four months look like? You know, like, of course, they will tell. But um, because I'm facing right now the first four months, I actually can say in like from my... <laughs> For my vibe and things like I actually facing this issue but you know first thing that you need is just your mindset and your positive energy if you can be with that at the start it will keep you keeping you going you know further and further every day that's it wow that's that's the that's the wisdom and nuggets right there so so <laughs> I mean we, we've touched on a lot there and I think we you know we could probably spend so much time but be mindful of time and the, ne the next thing I wanted to kind of just quickly give you the chance to talk about is, you know, so maybe what, what are some of your current goals or your, your focus areas at this point, whether it's, um, you know, you might not set your goals out as far, but whether it's for 2021 or just in general, and it could be about, mm -hmm. it can be for the business or it can be, you know, for your, your, your health, mindfulness or, or whatever. It's kind of like, you know, what can people hear from you around, you know, what are you focusing on and, and what are your goals currently at the moment? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, so my goal is just staying balanced, really. Um, I would say for my for the business perspective, I would like to scaling more, you know, getting more clients in and getting more uh, focusing on building the brand. Where personal, I'm focusing on staying balanced with my running journey. So I would like to keep my balance you know every week just keep training keep running and do some fitness and exercise um regularly that's the goal really for 2021 so not sure what the next couple of years look like but i feel like if you just staying focused tomorrow for the next day for now um the, the next two years that will be likely positive yeah no i think that, that's, a, that's a that's a that's a good answer because, you know, yeah. I mean, you know, obviously, you know, at the end of the day, you've probably got your bigger picture end game, you know, where you want things to be. Mm. But sometimes, you know, we get so focused on, let's say that, you know, you wanted to hit $100,000, but sometimes we can get so focused yeah. up on that, that we're forgetting about the little things that will enable us to get there 
at a at a steady pace right and I know you can relate to yeah. you know what it's like running a marathon or training for a marathon or a half marathon is because you know there's a process you know it's not about going fast it's about how long you can continue yeah. to maintain maintain that steady pace right to get there at that exactly. finish time and this is a marathon yeah. it's not a sprint and I think having yeah. that mentality helps a lot. It's a, it's a good unfair advantage for, for yourself. And I, I can say it's the same for me is because you're playing the long game. You're knowing that what you're putting into play, place now, you know, the 20 weeks or even if it takes two years in place is going to enable you to have that smoother sailing down the line or on race day yeah. in, in that sense. So no, I, I think yeah. that that's, that, I mean, that's a perfect answer. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, that's that's pretty much just the general general goal, really. So it can't actually. I mean, we could. I have the very very big dream and big goal, and that's always in my mind as well. But since COVID, like we never know what's gonna happen tomorrow, the next day, and next month. But I trying to focus, stay in present, and help uh, you know myself stay stay balanced and keep meditate and keep running every day and look after myself and others around me that's it I guess <laughs> no that's great that's good that, 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 that's all that's all we need to hear and hopefully yeah. I think that will encourage others because a lot of the time when we think about goals it is it's like oh it's got to be this or really big but those things that you've said are actually very very hard to achieve the balance piece especially right to have that that balance with with life with work with friendships with health and and all that so yeah. I think you've got you're gonna have your hands full regardless yeah <laughs> uh, so, so yeah the next the next thing then is um you know what I like to call rapid fire questions right and uh just a few things and you can you can dive into it or you can answer just short and sharp and we can leave it as that that yeah. that's fine so the first one yeah. being you know what's your favorite book you have read or you know a book that you've read just recently um, I have a, a lot actually, but I actually pick one because I finished early this year. It's from Jim Quick. If you know Jim Quick, it's called Limitless. Oh, yep, yep. It's about it's about um, you know how to learning how to stay focused and improve your memory and improve your brain capacity. So it's really good book. Um, if anyone would like to give it a go, I recommend it. Um, for me, I loved it because I think uh, English is my second language, I would say, and I give that as an excuse to take me um, a lot of to learn about language, but um, it's not actually about language. It is, it is about your how your brain operate everything. So in the book, they have like, um, you know, tips and tricks, how to memorize everything, how how to read faster and how you write better. So I that's that's my favorite book for this year so far, but I have a few in my bookshelf as well. If you want to hear more for the next time, I'll keep that. I mean, look, I mean, there, I mean, we could go on and on for books, but I think, I think, I think that's really good. And, and I'll put this in the show notes for people to, to check it out. Um, now I haven't read it myself. I have heard of it personally, um, but it's definitely one that I think I'll be adding, adding to my wish list. And I'm, I'm more of a listener than a, than a reader myself. But I think, I think that's something that we can all leverage and, and use those things that you've mentioned that the book carries. So I, I would encourage anyone to, to go check it out, um, whether they're listening or, or reading. Yeah. The next question then is, uh, if you had to list three strengths and three weaknesses, what would they be? Mm -hmm. Of your own, of your own. Yeah. I'll I'll start with my strength first. Then, so I would say I I am very resilient, as you can tell from my story. <laughs> yep. So I I I'm very not not. I mean, didn't want to say easily to adapt with everything, but I, I've been practicing that for a while since I came here alone. Like, you know, I have the ability to sit back and get up, you know, when I, when I fall, I get it back up very quick. And I would say that's my strength at the moment. And I am, I love organizing stuff. So I'm not sure if I'm OCD, but on my desk needs to be in order. <laughs> And I know you like oh, to color code calendar. your calendar, right? I color code a calendar, exactly. Um, everything needs to be clean. So I use that as my strength. 
And so for the weakness, um, for three things, I probably put it short in one. Um, I would say my, exp my experience in business is my weakness. So I feel like I have a long, long, long way to go in this business journey, um, entrepreneurship journey, and a lot of things that I have to learn, which is, you know, every time I jump into any new space, new networking, I kind of like put myself very small and my weakness is like, oh, I don't have any experience. But you know what, I just use this as I put the weakness tunnel into my strength really to put myself out there and just keep learning, keep, you know, connecting, keep, you know, learning from others. So that's that's yeah. my weakness. No, I, I think that's, that's really good. And, and to, to say that out to other people, I think that that speaks volumes because, you know, to come out and say you don't know it all and you are starting a journey and though you have plenty of, you know, education behind you, that's just it. You know, once you start to put it into application and start that journey, it, it is, you've gone through it. It's, it's easier said than done, right? Like it, there's a lot of hard work behind it. And, you know, I think that's been the key element that you've shared along the way. So, so, so thank you for summing that up. Uh, yeah. the, the next one would be, um, you know, three favorite things. It doesn't have to be three, but things that you like to do when it's your free time or, or when resting. Yeah. Um, running, of course. So I've, I love running, as you know. Uh, I can't live without run. I mean, not more than a week. So I actually haven't been running for four days. Uh oh. Because <laughs> of the excuse that the weather is um, it's raining. But um, yeah, I love running. And I sometimes play golf oh, okay. as well. That's cool. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't been playing for two years, but um, yeah, I sometimes play golf as well. And yeah, so my hobby is pretty much just um, just enjoy with my friends, really. Yeah. You know, going out with cafe, Friday night drinks, things like that. I call it a hobby. Yep. You know, <laughs> that, just that's good. Socializing. <laughs> networking and yeah so pretty much but yeah running is main thing main thing for me and um yeah i, I think that you you know yep. that <laughs> yeah no i do i do so <laughs> if anyone doesn't know yes um we're both runners in this so if you are runners and you are watching or listening do let us know in the comments yeah. because you know reach out because yeah if you're part of the running crew um yeah also if you are uh, um you know want to run with us just yell out send us a dm and you know melbourne runners is pretty big group as well and i really really enjoy our friendship around it's really really good yeah and it does it what brings so much to it i mean it's more than just running right i know we could go into around the whole the mental side of things obviously the physical side of things yeah. but it really is something which is um it's, it's very important for me to be able to get out and i feel the same if i don't do it after a certain period yeah. of time, I, I start going wild. It's 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 not good. It's yeah. kind of like an addiction. <laughs> um, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. So the the last rapid fire question then is our favorite quote. Oh, before I start, I actually call my girlfriend and I asked her, I was like, "What is your favorite quote?" And she was like, "I have a lot. Um, no, I have a few in my journal. So I pick one here." um it's it says the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams um is, is that by anyone in particular or is it something that you wrote it's from someone but i actually don't have the name that's fine i'll, I'll look it up and i'll put it in the <laughs> um, show notes for everyone yeah, yeah you can look it up yeah so i i loved it because everything is just about the dream if i know it's it could be, it's just a dream, but I would say it's not just a dream, it's a goal. So once you set your goal, that's your dream. And that's how um, you have to, how, that's how you motivate yourself to, to do stuff. Yeah, I think, I think that's and, really, I mean. Yeah, th without goal, yeah, without goal, like, you know, we are running a marathon, so the, the goal is just running marathon, right? If without that, we just kind of like, oh, what's next things? Yeah. What's next event? What's, what's the next goal for a run? But it's the same thing in the same life and business. I think I, I love setting the goal. Um, you know, it just, yeah. So you just just to believe in your goal and in your dreams. That's it. And I, th I think that really does, I mean, we're, we're about to get into the summary or of, of, of the wrap up, but that really does summarize, you know, what we've been talking about so well, because, you know, everything you've said, you know, chipping away at things, chasing the goals or chasing the dreams and building something 
and in that long-term mindset as well because it, it doesn't come over overnight and you know you've you've got a long background or history in you know doing your study working in different gigs and you know now you are starting basically from from scratch you know to build that next journey and it'll be interesting to see over the you know obviously by the end of the year and over the coming years and you know to then reflect at the same period of it's taking you maybe six years to get to here to even start this and then to see where it will be in six years time um yeah. because you know, really, when you think about the amount of time that we spend working, you know, we end up working maybe 40 years, you know, from a cliche perspective, but, you know, six, seven yeah. years isn't really a lot of time, like when yeah. from that, from that perspective. And then I know I would, I would be doing the same when you get to that, that point in life and you look back and you have the hindsight to think, it's like, oh, well, yeah, I remember I did this, then I did that, then there was this yeah. phase and you can appreciate yeah. it. And I think, you yeah. know, hearing, hearing from you, it, it's been really, really great because it does bring that fresh perspective and that early perspective of, you know, chasing those dreams or building a business or, you know, whatever it may be, whether it's a passion or, or goal. Um, and I know it's resonated really well with me and, and that's why we're doing the, the, the podcast, but I, I really believe <laughs> yeah. that others would have taken away from this some of those key points because the intent here is to enable people to, to take something away which is relevant for them. And I think you bring all those different elements together uh, just because you are, you, you've come from a different country and you've moved to Australia with such a big change. And then you've, you know, tried to find your way, figure out what your why is, what your purpose and passion is. And then you finally found what that is and you've, you've built and spent a lot of time and still are in nurturing and creating that into what it want, what you want it to be for the longer period. And that in itself just shows that, you know, all things do take time. I mean, all great things do take, you know, time and um, yeah. there's, there is no shortcut. And so th thank you. Yeah. Thank you so much. I mean, it, it, there's been so uh, much. No worries. I was actually thinking, so I probably need to put um reminder on my phone probably the next two years and say, oh, catch up with Chris and do another episode podcast and see how we go. <laughs> That's it. I mean, put, I mean, I'm going to encourage everyone to, you know, to go over to your socials and, and follow along. And, um, but yeah, I think that would be really, really good to be able to check in in a period of time and see where you're at. Yeah. And there's no right or wrong result because no matter where you are and what you're doing, it will be, you know, the, the right thing you're doing at that point in time. So um, yeah. I'll, I'll keep you honest to that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, so one thing then before we finish, um, you know, we've covered so much, but you know, what, what would be one thing that you would want to leave with, you know, the listeners, you know, if it was one thing that they were to take away from this, what, what would you want them to, to take away? Um, I would say, you know, just believe in yourself and always set a goal, no matter, no matter a small or big, and just, just take a step further every single day to, reach that goal for example your goal might be you know I want to for example I want to just you know launch that podcast for example and what's what's take you to launch that podcast or your goal might be I want to just get up and go to the gym you know it's just a little tiny thing that that's very important to us every single day where I feel like most of people tend to forget what they actually want to do um they kind of like as again come back to you say people you know um focus on the big goal rather than just focus a small one just a little tiny one as well like you know if you want to read your um goal just take one step little tiny bit um you know and yeah, I think that's that's the thing. And also do your best every day and forgive yourself, whatever it is, and just just do your best and enjoy. Um, be happy because life is too short. If you know, if you know that, um, you know, just 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 do your best and just enjoy your your life every day. That's it. Be kind. <laughs> And be kind, um, <laughs> of course, and keep smiling and, you know, be kind to each other and everyone. No, keep smiling to people on the train and everyone really. And because I loved it, like, you know, especially when we are runner and when we run yes. past someone and yeah. they 
they giving me a smile. I was like, oh my gosh, this was just so beautiful. That's it. <laughs> I don't know if anyone <laughs> looked at that and got like, it feels so much better. That's it. And it is, it's those simple things. And I think you, you know, I would agree when, you know, we've talked, spoken about a lot and th that's just it. Sometimes you, we do have those big goals, but understanding that those goals come with smaller goals and come with smaller steps and to focus on the smaller steps, don't try and focus on the big thing because the big thing is what's scary and what makes us feel uncomfortable and makes us scared. And, you know, maybe makes us feel fearful. But as you said, you know, if we can find the smaller things to enable us to take that little step further and to be our best selves each day, then you will get yeah. there. And no, that's that, that's a really yeah. great way and to. I also believe I would like to add one quick thing. And I would say like, stay in your lane as well. Stay in your pace. Don't compare yourself to anyone as a startup perspective where I jump into Instagram or look at, you know, successful business where I kind of like, oh, I've got imposter syndrome because I'm start comparing myself. And, you know, if you are listening right now, just enjoy your own pace, be your own journey and just own your story. That's it. Well said. Well said. So with that then, so where where is the best place for people to to follow along? You know, is it is it is it just on your website? Is it your Instagram? You know, where where would people go to follow you? Um I must I spend a lot of time on Instagram so following me uh, follow me at thekindesign.co on Instagram or jump into my website www.thekindesign.co as well so I sometime on Facebook as well and the same just searching the kind design um, if you want to go for a run send me a DM or would love to chit chat and connect with me I'm very happy to have a chat have a cup of coffee or tea that's it. That's awesome. No, thank you. Or even why. So, <laughs> yes. Yeah. If, if you feel like a glass of wine, yelled out, um, I'll be there. <laughs> oh, wow. There you go. No, th thank you so much. This has been really, really great. And it's been an absolute pleasure yeah. to have you on here. And, you know, we've, we've covered so much and it's been a lot to probably digest. And I think there'll be lots here that people can take away in their own, own ways. And it won't be everything for yeah. everyone, but there, I know there's small nuggets here. And even for myself, it just keeps me in check and keeps me honest. So, Thank you so much. No, thank you so, so much for having me, Chris. And yeah, all the best, everyone. Well, there you go, folks. What a wonderful episode. And I just want to say another big thank you to May for, for coming on and being part of this because once again, I want to say that what has really inspired me is the way she goes about getting her work done is she's very busy. She's, she's very self-driven and she's very motivated. And I love that hustle. But most of all, is she's spreading so much kindness as she does it. She's not just all about that in her business, but, you know, just in life. And she's very transparent and authentic about, you know, building something and creating something because it is no easy feat. And if you haven't checked out her socials, go over to her socials, go check them out because she's always sharing a journey. She's always sharing a quote. She's always trying to encourage and trying to inspire. And you know, that's, that's been encouraging for myself just because, you know, building out this podcast and, you know, other things prior to this. And it's just nice to be able to have that conversation with someone that's on the same playing ground, but also to be encouraged. And I'm inspired by what she's doing. So go check it out. Of course, we do have all the show notes. Jump around, have a look back and see what maybe, you know, maybe there was something there that stood out to you and you didn't quite capture it. Go back, have a listen, have a look. Of course, we are on the YouTube, we're on Spotify, we're on Apple Podcasts. So if you haven't checked it out on either one of those, maybe on Apple Podcasts, you can leave a review. On the YouTube, you can subscribe, you can comment and let us know as well. Uh, so yeah, really do appreciate you being here and listening. Um, it's, it's a great honor of mine to be able to bring these conversations and being that bridging person between you and obviously the individual or the guests that I have on the podcast. So really do appreciate you tuning in and I hope you do it again very, very soon. Uh, next episode, next week, same time, 9 a.m. every Sunday. Get excited. My name's Chris Fairlong. I am the host of the Further Your Lifestyle podcast and thank you for tuning in. 